Greetings! Welcome to the devlog for update 54 of Hot Dogs, Horseshoes, and Hand Grenades. We're going to start off as always with a quick sound check. Make sure your speakers aren't up too high. Wonderful. So what have we got for you this week? Well, we've got uh, a bunch of new toys to play with, but along with them, two new important systemic changes. The first of which I'm gonna actually demonstrate with our 1911 here. There is now in the options panel, and I'll show you where to find it under quick belt options, a new ninth quick belt style called new tactical test. We can see it here. It's a little hard to see because of how dark the scene is. There we go. That's a bit easier to see. But basically, we've got a new type of quick belt slot that is meant to emulate an actual magazine pouch. So instead of being spherical and as such requiring a whole bunch of extra forward back displacement, it's thinner and we have magazines line up nicely with it. Um, I've also, to accommodate this, changed the way that having a whole bunch of ammo in your hand, which is lined up like this when it's in your hand, but in a quick belt slot, it is now arrayed vertically instead of this big sort of a mishmash. So that is a little easier to work with. Load that back up. So there you have it. Uh, those are the, uh, the new slot types for this quick belt slot type. Once I have this all dialed in, I'm actually gonna go back and modify a couple of the ones on here um, that are more sort of tactical to uh, accommodate this, uh, but so far it's working quite well. So let's go ahead and jump over to the new toys um, and show off a new system that has come with them. So the first one we have here is long requested. I'm so sorry to all of you who are SKS fans who I've had to be, who have had to deal with that uh, Norinco polymer monstrosity this whole time without a classic SKS. But here we finally have it. Just look at that. This model is by uh, Ben Kala. Just gorgeous. Everything it needs to be. Pull that back. Pop our clip in. Load it like so. 10 round internal mag. Click that safety off. And we're going to witness the new feature, which is yes, even after I complained and said I wouldn't do it for the longest time, uh, I had a bit of inspiration after sort of admitting that I was wrong about something, and I'll talk more after we get out of VR, but I've implemented a virtual stock system. So as the firing hand here comes closer to the head, we can now see that the gun is incredibly stably lined up with my eye vector. Notice how much more stable that is. I'm gonna temporarily turn on the hands so that you can see how this functions. Now, if you're gonna use this, I definitely recommend having, uh, under firearm options, have hide control or geo when holding objects turned on. And the reason for this, here we go, use virtual stock, yes. Make sure gun rig mode is off. They are incompatible with each other is that you will actually get separation of the firearm grip hand when using this. Because the whole way that a virtual stock works is it essentially projects the hand position of both hands onto the head or some component of a sort of faux body rig to essentially create this extra stabilization. So you'll notice that my hand my grip hand does slightly detach from its default position and the rifle basically won't go back any further than its stock would allow. But this is what allows us to essentially seat the gun in and get this really stable position. Look at that. So yeah, so I'm going to hide my controller geo again. It even works with much shorter weapons and in fact for the first time actually renders some of the shorter sort of more compact SMGs uh, usable in a two-handed configuration. So what we're also getting this week is a classic micro Uzi. Just look at that sucker. Safe semi-fire. Pop a magazine in. Chamber it. Now before using this two-handed 
oh, I'll just pull in the stock here, would have been a little bit difficult. You're sort of doing this, you've got no stability at all, it's sort of like holding, holding your side on is a recipe in frustration. It's easier to just one-hand it, right? Well, now that we have the virtual stock, this will come in real compactly. We can now line that up. Get some great groups. And because of it, it's much easier to come from a sort of lowered position right into your aimed position rapidly. So there is our delightful micros. Moving right along, we've got two long requested uh, rifles here. That's right, we finally have this gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous foul by Stefan. Oh, beautiful. Pop that in here. Once again, I'm going to use the uh, virtual stock, which by the, oh, I forgot to mention the way that the virtual stock sort of blends in, and this was the, this was the sort of inspiration I had for getting good behavior, is that when, when the rifle is just out here in front of you, it isn't interrupting your control of it at all. It blends in based upon the distance of your firing hand to the HMD. So as you bring it up, it just smoothly blends us in and blends us out. There's no snapping. There's no sort of bizarre behavior. If you have it up here and release the firing hand, the gun doesn't snap at all. So you can totally just take a mag out, replace it, grab it again, come back up to ADS. Absolutely wonderful, wonderful. <sighs> Love this piece. So that is our foul in action. Do, do, do. Toss you over there. And then along with this, also by, uh, by Ben, we've got a classic G3 olive furniture. It's got that HK style charging handle so we can pull it up, lock it, and then slap it down. can actually change the diopter for those of you with a Vive Pro, uh, i.e. enough panel resolution to actually use it. There is a functional diopter, but most of you are just going to want to use it on the uh, default setting, more than likely. Oh, we are out. Oh, correct loading operation. Oh, did I not spawn lock that first? I am a doofus. But yeah, correct, uh, just to demonstrate, correct uh, reload operation, if you have it in, is to pull the charging handle, back it up, take the magazine out, pop a new one in, and slap it down. So there you have it. That is our new toys and our new systems. So please give them a, uh, a thorough testing. Obviously, with, with nearly 200 firearms in the game, not everything is going to feel perfect and natural with the virtual stock. I have tried to get it uh, as close as possible, um, but it is a so many variable problem at this point, especially with how strangely you can align sights, um, that it can be challenging. Um, but it definitely does, like say if I grab, let's grab just to demonstrate a couple ludicrously compact firearms here. So once again, the, the VZ-61 was functionally useless without the, uh, without the virtual stock um, to be used two-handed. But now, we can just pull this right up. We get a fixed distance. We can actually use our irons. And look at that. In this little sucker here. Beautiful. What else? What else was pretty useless before? You know what? I bet the, uh, yeah, the AEK. Another one. Pop that in. Pull that stock out, obviously. Same thing. We get a little bit of clipping because it's so close to our face. But gasp, we can actually use the irons in a stabilized way. 
And then last but not least, I'm sure a number of you have this as a uh, as a question. Where is, there we go. If we grab ourselves a uh, stocked G22. Let's get a stock. Let's get a foregrip. Doing this real fast. Grab our magazine. And now we actually have a significantly more aimable two hand. You can even pull that all the way out to there. Get nice and distant. Beautiful. Beautiful. So there you have it. Now, let us finally now jump out of uh, VR and talk about the fun toy that just arrived yesterday. Yo, out of VR now. Before we get to the new toy, I want to say a little bit more about the virtual stock because it is important as both a developer and just a designer writ large to admit to folks and to yourself when you were wrong about a concept. Um, I had had a great deal of resistance to the concept of a virtual stock, um, in part because I don't like, just as a general design philosophy, robbing control from the user um, with things, and because a bunch of the examples of a virtual stock that I had tried, like, say, Pavlov's, um, sort of take total control over the firearm's position, um, which results, I find, in having a much more limited set of options for the direction that the firearm can be pointing. It's hard to hip fire. It won't work with offset sighting, etc. So I had, because of that, I had not really given it my own shot from a development perspective. I had assumed that the trade-off in terms of control versus filtering had to be total. And it wasn't until I had gotten a copy of Stress Level Zero's Boneworks demo, where, which had been described to me at the time, that their shouldering had been dialed way, 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 way down in that version of the setting. Um, essentially, in that, like, you should barely feel it in most circumstances. And it was in feeling that and in liking certain aspects of that I was like, you know what, maybe I should give this a shot. Um, and at the beginning of the week, while I was like falling asleep thinking about vector math, I suddenly came up with the way that I wanted to approach the sort of axial projection to give me my faux stability point. Um, and then just sort of wo wo woke up, iterated uh, with it on alpha with a bunch of folks in the Discord, and have gotten to something that I quite like. So yeah, just a bit of a teachable moment as a developer that, that you, can, you can get sort of ossified in the way that you think about certain features or certain approaches um, because you've only had too much of a sort of limited sample set of ways that that thing could exist or could be implemented. So in this case, I'm really happy to be wrong because the way the virtual stock works, it makes iron sight shooting so much more tenable, both with compact rifles and with sort of large, long, large, ungainly ones. So please give it a shot. Um, but as I said, definitely, definitely turn your controllers off. If you're, if you're trying to think in terms of placing your firing hand exactly where it should be, you're thinking wrong. The entire way that a virtual stock works is by only taking certain things about this hand's position into account and certain things about this one and your head position to construct this sort of stable unified vector, um, which means that your hands are going to not be exactly where they were in real life. So it's just what we have to work with because we don't know where your torso is. So on to our new toy. That's right, we have bum, bum, bah, Rev 2 of the Knuckles controllers that Valve is working on. These are beautiful so far. A, uh, a far cry from the more hand-built uh, development units that I've used in the past. I posted a little thing on uh, our Vive yesterday about sort of quick thoughts. I haven't had a ton of time to play with them yet, um, but they were remarkably plug-and-play. There's a sort of legacy binding for these, so that even if you haven't done anything special for them in your game, um, it sort of defaults to, to essentially the cap sense of the handle emulating a grip button. So I was able to just turn on my like force use touch style uh, grab and it just worked um, out of the box. 
So for those of you who haven't seen these yet, let's take a little tour of the uh, of the controller. We have a to put it on. We've got this this wrist strap here that tightens. We've got a little button here, so you can open it up. So you can still have very large hands. So you can just slip it on, pull this tight, and then once this is on, especially if you really tighten it, this is incredibly secure on the hand. I can go like this, completely open hand, thumb not holding onto it. You can tell I really trust it because I'm flinging this directly at my monitor. So, it's on there. Um, fabric feel is nice. Um, yeah, so in terms of what's on our top surface here, and I'm going to be covering things I like and things that still need some work at the same time here. Um, we've got an A and a B face button here that has a great feel to it. I like these. The very um, 360 controller. Uh, kind of feeling. Um, we've got a system button here that at the moment is a little too easy to accidentally trigger with the base part, especially if you're like me and have hypermobile joints. My thumb tends to want to collapse like this when I press on things. And so by pressing the A button or the bottom of the thumb thing, I have been hitting this system button uh, a little too easily. I think it should be recessed. Um, the, uh, the joystick part is totally serviceable. I mean, it's a micro joystick. It's not amazing. It's not anything to write home about, but the, uh, the click feels firm enough. And because of the next part that I'm going to get to, the thing that's really great about this thumb system plus, uh, joystick here is that for my purposes as a designer, the way that the binding for this will be set up is that the joysticks will do exactly one thing, locomotion. So you'll be able to have them either in thumbstick form, you'll be able to have them in arm swinger form, which will probably just be like, does the joystick detect you touching it to be able to move? Um, teleport could be implemented a bunch of ways. It could be a flick forward, it could be a click, it could be a, you know, for folks who, even if you have a, a Vive setup, you might be restrained to a chair, have a bed back or something where you want snap turning. So I'll be able to do that. But it'll just be nice as a designer to be like, that part of the controller's for moving. Doesn't handle anything but moving. And the rest of it handles objects. So onto our new thumb thing. This is the newest part of this, which I'll be frank, I was very skeptical of when I went up and visited Valve because this was a hand-built uh, unit at that point. And the feel of this button was very different in that original like 3D printed. And I was sort of like, uh, hello, I need the touchpad for a lot of things. I'm kind of worried here. Um, but it works better than I would have expected. This is still a two axis trackpad here. You can go up and down on it and you can go left and right on it. You can either roll your thumb to change the sort of center detected point um, or you can physically move your thumb. I was really worried that, especially for things like handgun interactions, where we're essentially coming over and down to release a slide, over and up to lock it, uh, over and up uh, along with the trigger press to drop a hammer, or over and down to cock it, that that would fire incorrectly all the time. But I jumped right in and it works, because they've mapped the 0 to 1 range here, it works pretty darn well. So I'm feeling much better. And what's cool about this is it's sort of, it's a resist, it doesn't have a click. It's more like has a little bit of gush to it. So it's a force sensor, so you can really squeeze things with it, which I'm sure tons of people will come up with all sorts of goofy, gimmicky things to do uh, with gushing and squeezing it, as this part as well has a force sensor in it. It has a little bit of give to it, and uh, you can squeeze it. Um, which is cool. I haven't played around. I know tons of you are probably like, how's the finger tracking? How's the cap sense stuff? I haven't played around with that stuff at all. I don't have hands in H3. I'm still not going to be putting hands uh, in H3. So this stuff matters most to me in terms of how it handles a snatch and a throw really well. Um, so that's something I'll be playing around with more as soon as the uh, controller velocity stuff is uh, fixed in the Steam VR beta. Um, any of you who are playing H3, don't be on the Steam VR beta right now. Throwing's completely broken. It's a controller velocity software issue. And then lastly, my point of concern on the controller, which they've heard me um, 
on this. So we'll see how it develops. Is that this trigger is garbage at the moment. Oh my goodness. It's, it's the spring is too weak is the primary thing. Some folks don't like how widely dished it is. I, of course, would love it to be more like a firearm controller, but this is a generic VR controller, so I totally understand the argument that a trigger shouldn't necessarily be gun-like uh, in, in great detail. It should cover the greatest amount of things that need a primary initiation action. It should be comfortable. Um, but yeah, I think it it needs more travel distance, it needs a stiffer spring, it isn't breaking quite, quite at the right moment in terms of its axis, um, but I assume that they will continue uh, iterating on that, as honestly it's, it's, it's the biggest weak point of the controller. Everything else has leapt forward to a surprising degree since the last sort of prototype of this. That I played with and they kind of look sweet oh I, I should also show off there's some adjustability here because obviously folks are like what if I have really small hands um the way this sort of strap retainer works is that you can let's see if I can get this good on the camera if you push it in you can rotate it up to here so if you have if you have short fingers your fingers will be closer you can see if I have it all the way up here I can literally wrap my hand around the front of this but if you've got long fingers, push this in, drag it all the way down to here. Let me loosen that a bit. And as you can see, my thumb fits pretty much exactly where I'd want it to be. So yeah, so that is your little tour of the new touch controllers. These are going to be so much fun to put through their paces. And I got to say, as someone who's super futzy about textile feel, I really like the feeling of this strap. Um, I'm one of those types of people like I can't wear most wool I can't you know I'm I'm a bit of a princess pea when it comes to such things um, and this feels good this would not irritate me so and I don't know how fully removable it is or is planned to be but uh, yeah cool setup so there you have it um, in terms of What's coming next week or what I'm working on all in parallel is I'm preparing some fun stuff for the 4th of July. So aside from bug fixes, other sorts of system refinements, you should expect a couple new toys next Friday. And then on the 4th itself, that's right, midweek, I know that's a little strange, I'm going to be dropping another small update just for, you know, just because it's appropriate to have those things come out on the 4th. I'll probably do it in the morning of the 4th of July Pacific time. So it should be available hopefully about noonish for those of you on the East Coast uh, of the U.S. on that day. So, so yeah, well with that I'm gonna go relax. I've, I've had like two dental appointments this week. I'm exhausted. I've been on more painkillers and anti-anxiety meds for it this week than I normally feel comfortable with and I'm still sort of head swimmy so I might go take a nap after I get this uh, video and update uh, uploading it will be available at the uh, usual time hope you all have a wonderful weekend talk to you soon peace